Hey everyone, today I'll be doing something a little bit different. This video pairs up with another one I'm going to upload at the same time about composing for oscilloscopes. I'm recording the entire thing from start to finish, although it won't be as produced as other videos in the series just because of the length, uh, but the goal is to give you all a sense of what it actually looks like when I compose. I generally don't like long rambly tutorials, like this one is likely to be, uh, but my hope is that this is a better way to communicate this information. Um, let me know if more of this kind of thing interests y'all. A few other things to note before I start. Uh, the patch itself will be entirely in vanilla PD, uh, but I'll be making use of some externals. Uh, they won't affect the operation of the patch too much, they just make my life a little bit easier when working in PD. Mostly it's just this uh, Aussie slash out tilde, this is an output abstraction. Uh, just, uh, it just deals with stuff I don't. Uh, want to have to rewrite every time. So this handles that. Uh, and then this record one is actually going to be recording the entire tutorial uh, so that we can view what I did on the oscilloscope. Um, so I got to mix those together. So we'll start that one up. And let's see what else. Oh, so there is one external that may be worth uh, downloading if you don't have an oscilloscope or some other way to visualize. So if we go to find externals on help, right? So that was help find externals. Uh, if we type in else, this is the name of a library. This one right here uh, by Alexander Porez. Porez, probably pronouncing that wrong. Anyways, you download it and install it. Uh, I already have it, but if you don't and you installed it, make sure you close down PD and then restart. And then we say the name of the library, else slash, and then oscope tilde. And this is giving us an oscilloscope in PD. Uh, what's nice about this is that we have some built-in properties we can mess around with. So I can change the size, and I'm already setting this up to what I know is gonna look okay. Um, Audio ranges from minus one to one, but I just want to have a little bit of a border around whatever we draw. Um, otherwise, it'll be right on the edges. So do 1.5. Uh, let's change the colors. Make it look more oscilloscopy. Okay, cool. So here we are. Uh, and now let's just plug this in so you can see. Seeing our little waveform there. And we're drawing a circle just like we are on the scope at the same time. So pretty cool. So that's, that, that's the external. Uh, I don't have anything else prepared really to talk about. Uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna delete this because I don't need it. And all right, so what I've got here is the circle example from way back in the series. I think maybe it's the third video I made. Um, but anyways, uh, briefly explain what this does. This is a phaser generating a ramp from zero to one, also known as phase. And then we have some parametric equations here that draw a circle for us. We can change the size, we can change its position. And then we have these clipping at the end to our output and recording. Um, we take a look at this real quick, just so we can sort of see uh, how this works. So, right, so I can change the frequency. So if it's at one versus 50 versus, you know, 10,000, that hurts my ears. Okay, <laughs> size, right? And then position. Right, and you notice it clips when it reaches beyond the bounds. Okay. Say like 0 0.5. Next, um, what what else? Oh, yeah, let's, so we're making a one minute composition, right? So I'm making a comment and I'm gonna say composition parameters. Okay, so these are the things we decided on in the, in the video, or I decided on for us in the video. Uh, so our duration is one minute. Let's just make a few of these, uh, sort of informally keeping track. Uh, so the form was we had an intro for five seconds, we had an A section, 
for 15 seconds. B section that lasted 20 seconds. A comes back for 15 and then outro five seconds. Okay, so this is sort of loosely how we're going to divide up that one minute. And then what did we say? Uh, pitch, so our pitch information, right? We didn't choose normal pitches. We just sort of came up with a list of frequencies. Uh, just sort of just cause, purposely make it weird. Uh, make it interesting, I should say. All right, so that was pitch. What else did we do? Uh, rhythm. That was, yeah, I said it's gonna be random. 50 to 2,000 milliseconds. So this is pretty open-ended here. Uh, figure out how exactly we want to implement that. And then dynamics. We didn't really reach a decision. Um, hmm. I'm going to go off the cuff and sort of just say it starts soft. Start soft. Get louder. And then end soft. So sort of like a hairpin, it gets louder, and then it gets softer. Uh, and then instrumentation, I mean, keep track of it, but we're sort of already doing it here. Instr, uh, that's the synth we're building in PD. Okay, so these are our parameters. This is where we're starting from. And actually, before I get going with, you know, composing, what I want to do is make this patch a little bit more interesting. So right now, all this draws, does is draw a circle, right? And we can change the size and move it around, right? So not that interesting. But an interesting place to start might be some modulation. So by I haven't explicitly talked about this in the tutorial series yet. I'm gonna delete these. Um, oh, and all, all this stuff will be available uh, on the GitHub page for this tutorial series. Um, okay. So right, a good place to start uh, when sort of just exploring, because that's what I like to do, is so just explore for a little bit before we start, you know, figuring out how we're going to compose a piece of music, um, is modulation. So what is modulation? Uh, basically, you just have some parameter of, you know, this synth. I guess this could be called a synth here. Uh, some parameter of it is changing over time. And usually that's, um, you know, some other audio signal, but you could have something at the control rate. But anyways, so this is our size right now. But what if we got rid of this and used an awesome... Oh. Some PD stuff. I gotta remove the times tilde one. Okay, now it'll let me. Let's say one. Okay, so now this is oscillating at a one hertz sort of frequency. Uh, but you'll notice it's, you can see it's happening twice. There's like, one, two, one, two, one, two, instead of one, one. And that's because this is a sine wave, right? So it's going from, um, oh geez, I can never quite remember. I believe sine waves, yeah, they start at zero. So it's going from zero up to one, right? So one being the full size of the circle, goes through zero, right? Becomes a dot again, and then it multiplies it by negative one. So we're getting like the inverse circle. Uh, but, you know, since a circle is a circle, you can't tell, even though it's being multiplied by negative one. Um, so instead, what I like to do is control this range a little bit uh, with this map function. And this is part of my library, which is not part of the external, so you'll have to compile it yourself. So good luck with that. It's one of the main reasons I don't really mention this that much, because it's not very accessible to other people. Uh, but we have built a remapping function. I think we talked about it in the brightness video. Uh, I'll make sure to link where a vanilla version of this comes from. And I'll change it in the GitHub too to be the vanilla version so you don't have to download any libraries. Uh, but this just takes a range. So our input range is from minus one to one and I convert it to a different range. So you can see it doesn't 
um, oscillate as fast now. Plug this in. Let's say we don't want it to go to zero. It's a bit more interesting. Um, playing with the frequency is always good, so it's really slow right now. Let's see what happens when we speed it up. Kind of interesting. Get some beat frequency stuff going on. So this is do 100. Doesn't do anything. There's 101. Oh, sorry. You can sort of see, right? When it's at zero, we don't we don't get the little loop there. We can change the size of it. Kind of interesting. Mm, what if we made this like 251? Get this flower shape. That's kind of cool. I find this interesting, you know, and it, yeah, if I wanted to be a bit better about this, we want to make sure that we keep using only these frequencies. Um, although I guess just for modulation purposes, this is fine. I mean, technically I didn't list it as a pitch to use, but anyways, all right, so 251, let's maybe slowed that down a little bit. Okay. And so that's modulating size. What about position? Let's see here. Let's move these down. Let's try modulating the X position. So I'm going to copy this. And let's use a different waveform. Let's try a phaser. And so for a phaser, using this map is a little overkill because the range is simpler. But Let's just take this. And see what happens. Okay. And what if we made it minus one to one instead? Kind of interesting. Right, and remember, this is just moving left to right. We can make it go backwards. But when we speed it up... And... Hmm. Yeah, so you notice if we scale it down, and it's... But it's clipping, right? So it's clipping here. So we can't scale it here, so I'm going to... I have this abstraction, which is meant to work with a sort of a, a 3D vector. Uh, but we'll just sort of ignore our Z component for now. All this is doing is just multiplying the signal by a number. Uh, right, so if I multiply it by zero, don't draw anything one get the full size but i don't want to clip and let's try some other frequencies oh uh, just one other point i wanted to make uh this stuff can get really loud and sort of harsh really fast which I like the harshness and the loudness, but when you're designing uh, sort of to avoid ear fatigue, uh, I keep, oh, hold on. When I'm monitoring the sound, I like to keep it really low, so sort of save my ears. And take, taking breaks is good too. Um, sort of just, just pay attention to how your ears feel. And if you start noticing that it's more difficult to hear things, or if there's just maybe a little bit of pain or some, some soreness, that, you know, take a break. Okay, so here we are, turning my monitoring down a little bit. And 500 hertz, maybe? 
Let's see, 12,000. Can't see anything. Maybe. Huh. Interesting. I'm sorry if the silences are kind of boring, but this is how I work, sort of just messing around, following a just a stream of consciousness. So like Let's make this a bit wider. All right, so here's where I might make want to make changes to sort of the parameters we already set out. So when I'm on 12,000, we can't see this, right? And maybe if I make it even, yeah, no. Well, we wouldn't want to do that anyways, because now we're, we're trying to avoid clipping, right? But if I lower this a little bit, Right, we start to see it, and then what was it? Is it like eleven eight hundred? Right, we got something kind of interesting here. All right, so here it is at fifty one. Right, we got that thing, and then eleven eight hundred. We get this thing, right? Same thing. Two very different images, very different sounds and feels too. All right, so 51 was kind of interesting. Let's stick on 51. Hmm. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, so the other thing you can do is modulate the modulation. So, right here, right? This is controlling sort of the minimum of our sine waves remapped range. So, what if we, burp, another oscillator, interesting, 251, you know, and what if we sort of get this a weird range? Interesting. Oh, you know what I'm noticing? Oh, what did I put? 12, uh, 12 E4 doesn't do anything. 12 E3? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so that was a mistake. Let's put you back on 51 now. Well, hmm, no, this is kind of interesting. So, if I make this longer, and I say 12,001, cool. So now this oscillator right here is beating with this phaser over here. And That's kind of cool. So now, this is a little bit more complicated, but what I think is going on is it's, we've got two hertz on this guy, but then this 50 is interacting with this, I think. Oh, here's another thing to notice. So uh, one, one way I like to think about modulation is sort of, instead of what is the value now or right at this moment, what is the range of values that it will be? So when we're slow, 
it's easier to sort of perceive it as like a number that's changing. Which it is. That sounds dumb, but what I'm talking about is when we go to something like 51, we get the whole range of modulation. So now we're seeing sort of how the how this oscillator uh, relates to all the other oscillators, right? And it has a close relationship with frequency, uh, but not as much of a relationship with this 12,000. So this is kind of what I was meaning by uh, the parameters sort of influencing each other and being networked together, right? Because changing this has an effect on the frequency and then somewhat of an effect on what this what this does. But for something like this, right, so now this one over here has an effect on this one, right? And since this one is connected to this one, it also has an effect on what's going over here a little bit. But then because of the frequency we chose, it's also doing stuff over here. Okay. So this is pretty interesting. Oh, I plugged that into the wrong one. There we go. So check this out, right? This is already like really interesting, at least to me, right? We're just drawing the circle and then modulating it, and then we get this thing. And we didn't need to be geniuses to do this. Um, you know, we sort of applied some basic knowledge about parametric equations and modulation, and then we got this other thing that we mostly understand, but you know, uh, sometimes the math and the explaining of how something works is much more difficult than actually just making the thing. Um, at least for something like this. Uh, I'm not sure how true that is for other disciplines. But at least the way I work, uh, that seems to be the case for me. Okay, hmm, what else can we do here? Hmm, it might be nice to let's just continue on this modulation train, maybe. So the Y position, what happens if we do that? Hmm. What if this was something else? Oh, here's another trick. So if you want to turn some modulation off, right, but I don't have a toggle here. Like I could do something like this. 
make a toggle. I mean, this is a poor way to do this, but it, it works. Right? And let's Kind of hard to see it to change, but it's audible. Or we could do that. And we're saying, you know, hey, you have this range, just map it to some number. Everything's just going to be zero. Uh, but we can choose one, right? We could say, hey, actually, can you be 0 0.5 all the time? So that's a cool thing to do, or just a nice trick to have. Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's see. Hmm. Let's let's take a look at rhythm. So we have a little bit of that going on right now uh, from the beating. So this is one way to get rhythm. Not super reliable. Like this is just a bit awkward to to think about in terms of rhythm rhythm, excuse me, uh, right, because now it's like, you got to calculate the difference, it's one hertz, and then you got to convert that into like milliseconds in beats per minute, it's just a weird way of thinking, not, not super convenient, so let's do the random thing, so go toggle, Metro, give it an initial, and we want to be able to select the frequency or the rate. So this is going to be in milliseconds. So what a Metro does, for those who don't know, ooh, turn toggle, and it produces a bang. A bang is sort of PD's message that says, go do something. Uh, it doesn't carry any information other than please do something. So it's sort of like a clock or a trigger in um, modular synthesis. But this isn't actually, this isn't a number. This is just PD's own type called bang. And PD knows what to do with this, but this isn't anything other than, uh, sort of, this is PD nonsense to get some stuff to happen. Uh, but we want this to be random, right? So let's see. We're just going to say random. And this is to the range minus one, I think. So if we wanted zero to a hundred, let's do 200. You'll see where I'm going with this. So 200 and one, so zero to 200. Then we're going to subtract a hundred. So now it should be negative a hundred to a hundred. And then we want to divide by a hundred. So it sh now should be negative one to one. All right, sort of up the rate here. Let's every 100 milliseconds. Sort of keep an eye on this. That's, I think I did the math right there. Let's convert that into, hmm, another offset. So this is where it's starting to get a little patchy here. So we might have to clean things up in a second. Okay, hmm. Put these down. And we always want to do scaling at the end, generally. And let's do another. So I have, so just like scale is, oh, is it just trans till they? Yeah, there we go. Um, so just like scale will, is just simply multiplying. This one is simply adding. This also works on 3D vectors, but we just want to offset the X. So let's just make sure this is doing what I want. Okay. But I wanted this to generate random offsets for me. So just to give you a, a label here. And put it on the right. And so the range was 50 to 2,000. So this is the fastest it'll ever move. And 2,000 milliseconds. So once every two seconds. Cool. 
and it could be exactly the same for the the other one but i think it would be more interesting to have separate random numbers let's do that and let's put this back to like 100 cool all right so we already got something happening like this feels like it's starting to get some legs have something interesting happen um so i want to explore this offset more but i feel like these this modulation is getting in the way so i'm gonna do this and cool so now we just have a dot moving around which is boring but more manageable so let's just explore this range a bit so now i'm thinking i might want the random range to go a bit lower than 20. maybe like 10. let's change that Okay, dokie, and let's keep going. Oh, that's really slow. Okay, we don't want to stand 2000 for too long. Mm, let's put this back to my favorite, 120. Mm, and let's start adding this stuff back in a little bit. Oh, that's right, turn this off. Oh man, my legs are falling asleep. Ugh. I'm sorry, it's for the mic noise. I'm just gonna have to adjust my. So, one thing to note here is this Metro is happening at control rate, right? It's not dealing with audio. Every 120 milliseconds, something happens. And this is at the audio rate over here. But since it's a phaser, right, we're gonna hear a click when it resets and it's happening at seven Hertz, making it, you know, the clicky side of it, what we notice the most. But if we put it back up, you know, to 101 or something, Right, now we're noticing it as a frequency. Oh my god. Oh, sorry, man, my foot. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to pause for a second while my foot wakes up, this is painful. Yeah, so let's continue exploring. So what I'm doing right now, this is, I'm not adding anything. This is just me exploring 
uh, the possibility space. So this is really important for me. Uh, sort of just, you know, I only have so many controls here. It's important to spend time seeing what, what are the options? You know, how much can I get out of this? And even though we've only got like, you know, one, two, three, I don't know, 10 or so parameters, depending on if you want to include the ranges. Um, right, this is already a lot of things to sort of keep track of and understand how they work together. And I've certainly made things much more complex than this, uh, but it's always from starting from something simple and sort of slowly layering things on, seeing what's interesting, finding, you know, what, what, are, what are the parts of the instrument the, the sort of the characteristics that I find most interesting and how can I emphasize all the different qualities um, that are sort of part of the system. You know, the system being this patch that I've made, this network of connections. Um, some of them literal, right? This is a literal connection right here from Aussie slash trans tilde to Aussie slash scale tilde. Uh, but then some of them are, you know, not so obvious, like the relationships between these frequencies. These aren't directly related, but they are, you know, they are related. They do have, they do influence each other and the overall changes on the image. Okay, so let's keep, let's keep exploring. Um, Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we want to set, set, set up some logic so that when this metro turns off, uh, we'll just return the scope to the origin. So we'll set up a uh, select zero one. So when the toggle is off, we should output a bang. So on, nothing, off, bang, cool. 
and then on zero, we're not going to do anything for... So we'll bang a message, um, and it'll be just zero, zero. There we go. Pack, float, float. And then we'll want to... So this is a weird PD idiom, but you often want to sort of pack a message and then immediately unpack it. Uh, but we want this. So let's make sure this does what I think it does. Cool. And would be so this is where sort of creating sub patches is at least minimally useful. We can do a lot more with these. Um, but uh, I'm going to put this center when off. Just copy. And sorry, it opened it up. Keeps opening up these windows on the different screen here. Go inlet. Go outlet. Make another outlet. Cool. And we want to attach the toggle. But the thing I don't like about this, and this has been solved in other uh, variations on PD, so people's own versions, but uh, sort of the, re the connecting and the reconnecting when building uh, sub patches always sucks. Apparently, QuickTime doesn't like to record more than about 40 minutes of audio or <laughs> video. Anyways, so started a new recording and let's get back to it. So where were we? Ah, oh, yeah, we were exploring the the possibility space. Uh, all right, so back to messing around, and we'll get to composing in a second here. So uh, I'm sort of making a mental note here, 250 and 50. And if I was a bit more disciplined for this video, I would uh, make a note about it. I'd say something like, ah, oh, man, I need to name these. Um, I might call this like amp mod. And then meta mod. I don't know, that's a bad name, but two names. Spend some time being a bit more thoughtful. And you'd say like, Amp mod 250, meta mod, you know, 50. And th this is just a note to me, like, hey, this is something I want to spend more time exploring later. But since we're doing this sort of in a all at once, I'll just keep it in my head for now. And we'll see if we end up using it. And then something I'm noticing here is that when... Now, this sort of is makes a lot of intuitive sense to me, but when they stay from 0 to 1, we sort of the image gets stuck in the top right 
of the the screen. So we want to do this. And sort of what I'm doing here is, uh, you know, I have these parameters over here, but I'm, and I'm sort of loosely trying to, you know, stay sort of within this range, but, you know, every time I find a new sort of look or feel, sound, it might look similar, but sounds different, um, you know, pause for a second and sort of think about how things are working, right? Um, so... You know, these are off, so we can ignore them. This is sort of at a... 165 milliseconds is a sort of a medium fast. There's some forward energy, but it doesn't feel frenetic. You know, sort of... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how else to describe that, but... 165 is a good, it's a good millisecond. Um, but we do have these on. These have a 1 hertz relationship. And if we turn this off... Yeah. So one technique I like to make use of a lot is, say we're here. Like, this is our start. A place we could start. We could start our composition like this if we wanted to. And then an easy way to sort of have development and sort of change over time and like stuff, material to work with over the course of your composition. An easy way to sort of bake some surprise and development in is you start off with zero on some parameter and then you slowly add it in. And you can see it's given a little bit of... It's adding to the momentum, right? We're starting to gain some forward momentum. We're like, ooh, things are changing. Something's happening. Uh, I don't know. It's exciting. Maybe not in this sort of slow and pondering way, but in a composition, something to note. What is adding energy? What's making you want to move forward? And uh, what sort of slows things down, right? Obviously, we could slow things down like this. And you can sort of feel the composition's energy lowering. And then we get stuck on this drone. And then if we wanted to end, we could slowly remove these things. And that could be the end of the composition. All right, so I feel like I've made enough changes to this patch that we can get something interesting to happen. 
um, over the course of our one minute piece. So next up, let's think. So we're going to want some material for each of these parts in our form. And let's think about the intro. And we'll just sort of loosely take notes over here, although usually what I do is um, I would have something like this. I'd have Obsidian, and I have scripts and all sorts of stuff like this. Um, and I would take notes in Obsidian, but I only want to record one screen, so we'll keep it in PD. And let's see, intro. So we want to start with the circle, and it's going to be five seconds. So that's really short uh, for an intro. Let's unmute these things. And put this on 100. Hmm. So to start with, we could maybe start from a dot and then grow to a circle in five seconds. Um, now, so another thing about this is that we're not going to talk about uh, controllers or sort of more broadly human computer interaction. Like, how are we controlling the synth we've made? You know, right now we've got all these knobs and toggles and things uh, in the patch. But this is really clunky and just difficult to, to work with it this way. And I, I've been doing this a long time, so I've weirdly got some skill at operating a patch this way. Uh, but really, it's, it's much better if you go out and find some controllers. Um, for your first controller, I, I, I would recommend just getting something simple and cheap just to experiment with. I, I think I have a MIDI keyboard that cost me like 40 bucks and it's kind of crappy, but I still use it all the time just for testing things out. Uh, you know, if you're, if when you're learning and you're just, you know, interested in exploring something, don't go for the crazy expensive gear. Just get something that sort of has the base functionality that every controller is going to have and get a feel for how does this thing interact with my patch? What's it like to connect it up and, you know, get it working how I want to? Um, uh, yeah, that's something to explore on your own. And uh, eventually maybe I'll make a video about that, but for now we're, we're going to control the patch in house. So getting back to controlling size as our intro, what might, what we can do is I'm going to make some controls, I create a bang. So this is like a do something. And then we'll say, what's the message? We're going to start from zero. Go to one, and we'll do it in 5,000 milliseconds. And we'll do V line tilde. So this generates a ramp from zero to one in 5,000 milliseconds. The comma sort of denotes uh, different parts of this list. So the first message is just a zero, and then the second message is one 5,000. Let's plug that into size. Press this button. Kind of a slow start. What if... Actually, let's... Hmm. Okay. And use, just use power like this. Every programmer ever will tell you that power is slow. Uh, I think for here it doesn't matter. So let's do squared. Let's square it. Uh, what if we came in a little bit hotter? Okay. Maybe 2,500. And... Let's 
probably say, let's try something. Oh my gosh, 0 0.8. Okay, cool. Let's just change this to 0 0.8. It's going to be 0 0.8 for all time. And I think actually if we did pow tilde 0 0.8, this would be the same thing. Okay. So maybe PD's internal implementation of pow is more computationally efficient. So that controls our size. So this can be the start. I'm going to label this. I'll say start. Uh, let's call it intro because it's for the intro. And the label, let's move it 25 and 12, 11, okay, 10, 11. Okay, so this is our intro button. And this is how we'll start the piece. Click. And maybe it's had a bit of a delay. So we're going to send zero first. Uh, let's delay by a thousand. So we'll send first zero, and then we'll send one twenty five hundred. So what we're doing here is sort of not sort of, we're, we're making an envelope, right? And there's more um, efficient and sort of smart ways to do this in PD, but this is the absolute most basic way to get sort of envelopes happening. Uh, the else library has a lot of stuff that vanilla PD doesn't have, so getting else is a great, great way to get some, some of the basic functionality that other programs don't make you build yourself like envelopes. PD doesn't have a native way to do envelopes. You sort of have to build them yourself or find a library like else. Okay. Okay, so that can be our start. And let's see, we draw a circle, start from dot, grow. Next, we need an A section. A uh, section. What can happen here? So let's add a bit of motion, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty good. And we only have 15 seconds. So what I'm already thinking about the, the user interface, but what I want to do is I'm going to create a send and receive. So my interface is going to be over here. And I'm slowly going to build it up. And then over here, there's going to be sends and receives that sort of allow me to not have to draw connections all the way across the patch. So let's give this a talk. It's already set this up 11, and I think I said 25 earlier. Uh, let's call this move or rand move. Mm, okay, oh, send. And we want to send this to... Uh, normally, you'd want to do something like $0, right? So that $0 uh, sort of is the patch patch's unique ID number, and PD sort of generates this automatically and translates this for you. Um, and that way, you don't have, you know, conflicts. Like, what if something has the same send or receive symbol, and you don't want them to talk to each other. So you append dollar zero, or you could put it on the end like this. Uh, but since we're making this one patch, it's not super important. So I'll just say uh, move toggle. Oh, I did that on this one. Dang it. I want to receive move toggle. And we can get rid of the label. Now this one, we want to say move toggle, or just call it move. What? So indecisive. 11, 
26. Sensible move. So now... I'll do the same over here. Say... No, receive symbol. Move. Right, milliseconds. Create another number box. Move, right, milliseconds. And then send to move, right, milliseconds. Okay. Let's set some boundaries on this. So lower bound is 10, upper bound, 2,000. Uh, if you do shift command or shift control r pd will clean up a little bit it's not super reliable but it's useful to try at least okay so we got a bit of movement happening so we're gonna say what happens next brand move is going to be on and the rate is 120. So this is like my absolute favorite. Uh, 10 million hertz uses 120. Uh, lots of my compositions use 120 milliseconds as the as the rate that things are happening at. All right. So to start with, it'll turn on, and then hmm. oh. Uh, I'm just going to make another scale here. Actually, I'm going to put it before the volume one. Oh, geez. Come on. There you go. Call this uh, size. Right. Send size. Uh, so you don't need number boxes or GUI elements to receive or send symbols. You can just type in receive, or you can do R for short, receive, and then the symbol name, so size. So this will give us some manual control on top of the intro. So what could be interesting is if we And turn this off, set this to one. Right, so we start the intro. And maybe this is already set to like 0 0.3. And then we sit there for a second, and then we start. Right? Cool. Let's also add a range control to to random here. Uh, duplicate. We'll call this brand range. And we'll just multiply by that number as well. Still zero to one, okay. All right, so what I'm thinking is, start the intro. Random movement, bring up random range. And then bring up size.
can bring maybe the move rate up. It gets faster and faster. All right, so let's say over mm, need this for a sec. So I'm thinking for the A section, then it's going to be turn on Rand. No, Rand is on Rand range to one. Remember, we got to do all this in 15 seconds, so don't want to make this too complicated, and this might already be too much, but I'm about to test it, so we'll see. Then we're going to bring up size to 0.8. Let's add a note about size being size is 0.3. And then what else is happening? Move rate to 10. Cool. And let's unmute this. Oh boy. And I'm not going to time this out precisely to 15 seconds, but I'm sort of just going to get a feel to see how much I can do in 15 seconds. And you can see I already messed up, but let's try this again. So now what I'm thinking is, that could be good, uh, but since we only have a minute, what might be more interesting is to mess with, mess with one of these other parameters. It might make the development a little bit easier into the B section. Just remember, we have to return to whatever it is in the A section. We could make this like an A prime, or we could say C. Uh, but we're going to have to return to some version of A. So we want to make sure that it can go into B and come out of B. OK. Uh, so let's, let's check out some other options. Let's say, you know, I do like the movement. Let's say we add it in. But then the next thing that happens is something else. Super excited about that. What about this guy? I like this a lot more. Okay, so what happens in the A section? We are going to... Hmm. So let's say, let's just say, turn on and move, and then we'll just lay 121. 120 rate range one. 
you know, maybe we flip this size, so a bit of graphic design or UI stuff here. You know, size is not related to these, so maybe they should be separated a little bit. Um, all right. Add in metamod and amp mod. Let's unmute this. Oh, sorry. I, I never muted it. I just turned down this monitor. Okay. All right, so we're back to this. And let's turn you off. So which one are we adding in first? If we do... What is going on? Oh, do I need this to be at one and one? Okay, not sure what's going on there. But I want you to be. Ah, perfect. Okay. Actually, if I set this to one and one, and then. So you're not in, and let's just say 250. Nothing happens. I see. Okay, so zero one here, one here to start. And we're sitting here and moving. Say 250. And okay, so this adds a lot of energy. So we, we jump. Okay, and then maybe. Then we're going to quickly add this. Maybe 12e3. Uh, maybe not immediately. Uh, let's change this to 500 maybe. Okay, yeah. So we'll start with amp mod. So we'll say amp mod 250. And then move you down. And we'll say add in meta mod 51. All right, so this is going to all happen in 15 seconds. And yeah. So let's see. Is that going to be interesting? So we'll do zero here, zero here. And let's move the size down a little bit. Zero point, zero point three. Zero point three, not zero point zero three. Okay. okay, so we're here. And... stay at 120. Okay, so then I guess the B section is going to have to be some sort of interesting peak. So, uh, meta mod jump to 12v3. Alright. Continuing with our amazing composition here. Let's see. Let's make a B section. And let's think about. Hmm. So moving this rate turns out to be kind of tricky given the amount of time we have. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So we want. So we want to change the. 
Oh, let's leave those controls over there. They're mostly sort of together and easy. Um, hmm. Let's write this down though. So before we were here and here. Let me say, mm, we gotta give these titles. Let's go. Y off mod top. X off mod top. All right. And then we were say Y off mod 12 3 Is that what we did? Uh, minus about 10. X off mod. Similar. Let's actually say 12800 for this one. with this parameter so much, but I don't think it works. Um, hmm. All right, so we added that. We got 20 seconds. Let's crank it up. How do we make this crazier? Okay, so now I feel like I've lost a bit of the energy going this way. a little melody maybe that'll be at the peak so this is going to be actually we want to do some processing on this so oh, an h radio the way this works is it just outputs a number which square are you on and it starts from zero so oh, maybe i make the multiples of 50 and i'll make it five long Oh, and I'll, I'll want to do a plus one so we don't start from zero. And then this should give me multiples of 50. Cool. And let's do send main freak. So the way I like to label these main phasers that sort of control everything, uh, main, I'll, I'll call it main freak or MF, uh, receiving main freak. What if it slid around a little bit? So one thing you can do is, actually let's do this up here. So we could make this frequency slide around a bit. Uh, we could say, yeah, we wanna do, say dollar one. So the number we're about to receive, dollar one. And what if we get it? Like a hundred millisecond. Oh, and V line till there. Now it doesn't have a frequency. Man, I really want to go super low. How do I emphasize? I want to emphasize sort of the base here.
Hmm. Not sure, but coming back to this, I'm going to label this MF radio. Okay. You can live over here. Hmm. And I'm going to say MF LED. Other freaks can move too. So I'm going to leave this open. Um, improvisation is a big part of my practice. And something I like to do if I want to fill out time and I know sort of vaguely what I'm trying to do. Well, this isn't super vague, but if you know, I have an idea of sort of the sound and feel I want, I can just describe that sound and feel and practice getting it, you know, playing my instrument and getting that um, kind of whatever the idea or expressive idea I have practice being able to get it and then i can say you know do that thing do that effect uh, play it this way and instead of writing out exactly when and how everything happens i sort of just know i'm, I'm specifying a way of interacting with the inter instrument rather than uh you know a line by line detailed this happens at this time and it has this number and if I wanted to be more specific, I might, you know, start providing ranges and generally general timings and stuff, right? Okay, but this can be our B section. And let's make this window a little bigger. Move all this stuff over here. And we did want to get louder, so let's also clip. Let's clip the signal. Clip. And where can we clip? Let's make size actually go bigger than it needs to be. That's kind of cool. Okie dokie. Then we'll clip, and then we need to come back to our A section. So we need to get from here back to A section. So we could just go everything in reverse. Uh, which would be, oh boy, it's going to be a little awkward. I think this is supposed to be at 100 to start with. And then this would be zero. Uh, the other thought I'm having here is if sometimes you can sneak in changes, like when things are a bit more crazy. Like if there's changes happening here, you can hear it, like visually you're not going to see anything change much, like but sonically. So if I wanted to spend more time here, I would think a lot about how these two frequencies interact and maybe get some polyphony, uh, multiple voices happening at once here. Okay, so this is craziness, and we need to get out of here. Now let's make sure we're clipping too. So what we want to do is set this to 12E3, and it removes the base. energy drops out. We can slow down. Okay, then the energy drops out. And we want to make sure that's a little bit off. So to get back into the A section, we're going to say uh, amp mod 12e3 minus about say 40 
so we get some modulation, and then we'll say x off mod zero. Actually, let's and the y off mod will also go to zero. And we're gonna slow down, slow down, rand rate. And we want to get smaller, so so I've decided on how the A section and the outro is going to work. So we start with. Uh, setting this to something that's like 12v3 but isn't and then for we remove these two slow down random rate and turn it off and we also set the range to zero sort of reduce the range slow down round rate and reduce range turn it off and then we're going to end up with this sort of, what is this? I don't know, wobbly thing. So this is our sort of ending, uh, but you know, it's a little bit different than when we started. And then maybe we just click uh, outro bang. So we're going to do same thing. Actually change this. Receive intro. Receive outro. So the intro is going to bang this. Let's copy this and just change the numbers. Outro is going to start at one, go to zero. Oof. And then that can go to V line. Let's create those bangs. So, not ping, bang, send, intro, label, intro. Okay. Duplicate you and just change it to outro. Let's test it. Maybe set amp mod to one one nine nine zero. Uh, no, because meta mod might not be that. So set amp mod to meta mod. <laughs> All right. So this is our composition. Um, let's try it out. And let's see how, uh, yeah, let's find my phone. Ah, there it is. I'm going to set a timer on my phone just to see how long my composition actually is. Drink of water. Okay. There we go. I'm going to try performing the composition. See what happens. And, ooh, I want to set up. I want to set up the start. So I want to say intro. So this should be at 100. Uh, so I missed something important here. So pre start settings. So you want to either create a preset system, uh, which in PD is not that great but it is possible um you could do something like this you go uh load bang so this will call a bang on load so the patch loads and then pd says hey do something 
and you could say, you know, use semicolon to say it's a message, you want to send something. Um, and I could say send to outro a bang. And just the outro. Or I could change them so I could say outro bang next semicolon. So this is a new message, and I'm going to say main freak uh, 3000. You notice that it did both those at the same time. So not only could you set up sort of, um, you know, presets like this, you know, you could have a preset that's a bunch of different messages. And you could, you know, sort of hit all of them, uh, you know, set up a bunch of bangs or something like this. Um, I prefer to sort of outsource presets to JSON and then have, there's some externals that allow you to work with JSON and it's, it's, it's a lot easier. I think else also has a preset system. Um, and then plug data, I believe also does. So this is what the, the preset system is one of the major sort of problems with PD is, um, it doesn't make it easy for you. Uh, all right. So I do, we're just going to comment what the settings should be. So I think main frequency should probably be 100. Metamod should just be off. Put that to maybe 011, 250. Okay, so main freak be 100. And amp mod will be 250 to start with. Say meta is off. Say xy mod, they're all off. And rand is off. I think that's basically everything's off, right? I have it already set to 250. Okay, so, oh, and then size should be 0 0.3. So we'll add that up here. All right, so this has been kind of janky and very sort of, hmm, loosey-goosey. But the ideas, I think, are mostly solid. Um, when I control patches, I don't tend to do this anymore. This, it was a good place to start for me and maybe hopefully for y'all as well. Um, but it's much better to get a controller going. So I recommend doing that as soon as possible. As soon as you're sort of, you know, starting to create your own instruments and moving a bit beyond tutorials and things and sort of have your own ideas about what might be interesting to do. Um, getting a controller and getting used to Interfacing it with PD is a good idea. Um, for OSC, you'll want to use net receive, I think is the object name. And for MIDI, uh, obviously that's in. And there's lots of objects for handling MIDI. Uh, so MIDI and OSC are kind of the two ways you get data in. I prefer OSC just because it gives me more numbers to work with. MIDI only has 0 to 127. Uh, but MIDI is just fine for many, many purposes. Uh, just not for me most of the time. Okay. So now here's where we sort of go through and clean this up a little bit. We're going to run through and sort of loosely perform this maybe once or twice and sort of modify what's going on here and see, see if it works like, like we think it does.
Okay, so this is already over a minute. So I can tell that what I've written um, needs to be tightened up a little bit. So let's just try doing that again. And I noticed I want to add in a size goes to one. All right, well, I'm going to add this to my list of params. So rate should start at 120. All right, here we go. Performing our attempt again. Man, this is going to be tough to fit into a minute. So I think what I'm going to do is just double everything. Or let's say give 30 seconds for this, 40 seconds for this, 30 seconds for this, and maybe 10 seconds for the intro. And what does that make it? Uh, 50 minute, 1 minute 50, about 2 minutes. It's slightly less because I didn't double this. And let's try the same thing but with 2 minutes. And I need to reset all this stuff. Ugh. Ah, oh, man, I really should have made a reset, but I'm also going to leave the frequencies on these two here. I think there's no reason to set them. They can just sort of be there, and then we adjust the, the sizes to turn them on instead. <laughs> all right, one more time. Here we go. Two minutes instead. And we didn't set size to 0 Okay, I lost. I got lost. Uh, so after clipping, I wanted to put this at... Oh.
Okay, so wrapping up, let's see. So, so, so some things that, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that still needs to happen here. Um, I think the first thing I would do is add in a preset system, um, a way to just easily switch between settings. And that can either be with the load bank thing we talked about before, and, you know, you have a bunch of messages and you send them all out. But if I wanted to make this a bit more robust, I would probably go to the JSON thing. Oh, wow. Clipping voice. Um, right. And in this form here, you can see how it has some issues. Like I went out and sort of came up with these numbers here, but then we had to double them. And then sort of, I think the problem really is, is that I just don't have a lot of practice writing really short things. Like one minute is so hard to write for. Maybe not the smartest decision here, but um, two minutes is a little easier. I don't know. I just find myself, um, because I, it's a lot about, my composition is a lot about like development and things changing over time and going from one spot to another spot and sort of it's about the change from A to B. Uh, I think that demands a little bit more time. So maybe a better duration for this composition is three minutes. Um, hmm, what else? Oh, we, we've sort of abandoned the form a little bit. So we're... This has changed enough that I, I wouldn't want to call this A, B, A, intro and outro. I might want to say like something more like a, B, A prime. Although what I'm doing is sort of starting to feel like a C section. And then the outro is the thing that sort of ties back in with intro and A. But this formal stuff, like the, the naming of things is not so important, at least to me. What's more important is the section has a name and you understand what the name means. So that it, it should just mean something to you. So if I call this like, post intro, you know, as long as I understand what post intro means and where it goes in the form, all good. Uh, I tend to just give these letters or name them something kind of generic, like middle, or maybe I'll use uh, exposition if I'm feeling a bit more narrative about the, the piece. But anyways, that's that. Um, hmm, what else? What else to note here? Oh, controllers. I mean, we mentioned human computer interaction and con MIDI controllers. Uh, I think, yeah, to start out with, this is fine, but uh, move, moving quickly moving on to something else is a good idea. Uh, the reason to do this is so that you can sort of play around with the patch without having to build it out all the way, you know. Um, building interfaces for controllers and thinking about how a controller should control a patch is a whole other can of worms and thinking about how that's going to work. Um, setting it up isn't too hard, but getting it to do exactly just what you want is a little tricky. And the other thing too is that um, sometimes you'll want to modify the patch. You'll be like, ah, oh, it would be really cool if I added this feature. And let's say my feature is that I only want you know, maybe I want a, a second modulation also happening on this, for example. Well, now the patch has changed and there's more controls. And so until the patch is sort of solidified, it's a bit easier to have your controls just in the patch already. Uh, another thing you might think about doing is building a PD patch that just is a giant blob of controls already. And sort of making those quickly and easily mappable onto a PD patch. Because then you just have to say, instead of setting up MIDI or OSC, uh, all you care about is these send and receive symbols. So you can have another patch somewhere else and then quickly set your sends and receives and have just a bunch of bangs and toggles and all that other stuff set up ahead of time. Uh, I don't know. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to record the a final version of this composition. So it's going to change a little bit more uh, 
the patch itself won't change. It's it's more about just getting it to fit within that uh, maybe two minutes. I, I might even I might want to try and get this down to one minute. That could be a fun exercise. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you, and I I hope this is helpful. All right, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.